Hello guys, so today we will discuss about another branch of discourse analysis and it will be about the connections between discourse and the ideology with me, Pa Fifi Huanu Muslimin. So as you have uh, thought before that actually words have power. So when you listen to different dictions, love and like, when it is mentioned in a sentence is like, I love you and I like you. The audience or the hearer who accept these uh, sentences they will act and think differently. So the word love was chosen by the speaker because they have deeper intentions to deliver desire or deliver feeling compared to use of like in a sentence. So it means here that like and love in a sentences are example of discourse because there was a certain functions and purpose inside the discourse. Then you could see also that discourse may be in the form of spoken and written language in a special social context. Then when you take a look at these two pictures, you could find that those pictures contains not only literal meaning but also inferential meaning. So when you take a look at the first picture, literally you understand that there are fish, hand, and colors. But when you go deeper to the real meaning of this picture, you may um, make a conclusion that it's not only about um, meaning of fish, hand, and color, but there is also uh, an ideology about discriminations. Also, the second picture, Anyo ikut KB dua anak cukup. When you take a look at the meaning, literal meaning of this picture, you will only understand that it's only about um, a sentence that has a certain instructions. But actually, there is also a crisis, a phenomena in Indonesia that a family has more than um, enough children. So there is an ideology is stated impliedly inside a certain discourse. So what is ideology? It is a set of beliefs and values that are held by an individual or group of people. So a certain group may have a certain belief. And the ideology shapes people's actions, thought, interactions, which in turn shapes the process of society. And this term was populated by Anthony Testut, a French philosopher in the 18th century. He believes that it is about the science of ideas. So when someone has the ideology, they would like to keep the ideology in their mind, in their behavior, and they need to put this ideology also to another people by persuading others. Also, when you discuss about music, there's something in music which is obviously beyond language itself. When you find the lyrics of music, you try to understand and translate the language in the lyrics, what you will get is only about understanding the meaning. Then, when you listen to real music with the compositions of sound and the arrangements of, of instruments, and also you listen to the joy, you involve your feeling inside there, you will find that there is something more than only understanding the translations of lyrics. So it means that there is something behind of music, there is something more in music, that is more than only about language that may bring you to a certain memory that may also possibly change your belief and ideology. So relating the ideology and also uh, discourse, I quote uh, quotations here that language is never neutral because language depends on someone's thought. Language depends on someone's feeling or heart is never neutral. Discourse is the way in which language is used socially to convey broad historical meanings. It is identified by social condition of its use, by who is using it, and under what conditions, language can never be neutral because it breaks our personal and social world. So when you take a look at this picture, discourse and ideology are human thoughts and communications which are related to each other. So the choice of a language which is produced by someone depends on the intention on what kind of communications that the author speaker is using to deliver their thought. 
Ideology, ideology may change the discourse. It includes how person's ideology will influence how they speak and write. Also in various contexts, whether in a public discourse or private one. So when you understand this um, paragraph, you will find that similar idea may be delivered differently by someone who is speaking either in public or privately. Just like when someone would like to borrow some money in front of someone, so one to one, they will speak frankly. But when someone speak uh, to borrow some money in front of public, they will use a different language. So it means that the productions of discourse really depends on context, depends on the purpose and function. To understand deeper about how ideology may be uh, transferred into a discourse, you can learn about uh, rhetorical devices. There is a linguistic tool that employs a particular type of sentence structure, sounds or patterns of meaning in order to evoke a particular reactions from an audience. It is commonly used in persuading audience. So when you listen to a political uh, candidate speech during the elections in a country, you will find that someone will use a certain uh, jargon, certain dictions, and certain intonations to create uh, what is that positive and persuasive um, mm, uh, language that can be accepted by the audience. They need the audience belief on him. They need the audience follow her. So it means that the rhetorical devices here is employed and chosen because the speaker has certain intentions that is delivering a certain ideology that the audience should believe him, that they have to choose him as the uh, winning uh, candidates in the elections. So here you could find that there is a very tight connection between ideology and discourse that discourse is always um, underlined by ideology. So you have to read deeper some other references to understand this one and you have to be curious to find out another example about the existence of ideology inside the discourse. So keep learning. Thank you very much. See you later.